Hello my friends, this is Ian and welcome to today's video in which I will be finally getting around to creating my spider sona. Now there's nothing new about a spider sona, they've been around for a couple of months or at least since the film came out, but I have refused to do one point blank until such time as I had actually seen the film, because that made sense to me. And now I have seen the film, I went into the cinema like first thing in the morning on Sunday because it was the only showing that I could get to and I have finally seen the film so I can finally tick that off my list and get round to doing the actual, the piece, the art, uh, the spider sona. I'm gonna make me into Spider-Man. To begin my journey into the Spider-Verse I started by creating four rough ideas starting with a very a generic Spider-Man type suit, just that kind of morph suit look, and then moving on into a more extreme example, a more extreme suit where I've got a big cloak and a hood. That helps to break up that traditional silhouette, and it's a very, it's go-to uh, character design thing that I use a lot is this cloak and hood combination. So I went back to that traditional Spider-Man kind of look again with the third one. This one was a bit more of a just a crazy idea, just throw some things together using um, elements of different spiders and things that we have in the UK. Uh, and I came up with this guy who's just a bit kind of jungly, almost looks like he's a poisonous jungle variant of Spider-Man and since, you know, there's not really much jungle in the UK, I went back to that cloak and hood look, and this time went with a much more figure-hugging cloak. I also experimented with the idea of giving him some kind of a prop or a weapon, in this case it was a bow, because I've got background in using or doing archery. Uh, didn't really feel it fitted with Spider-Man too much, so in the next design where I was feeling more comfortable with where I was heading with this guy, uh, I tried using a rope dart and that worked really well. I realised that would be perfect. Peter Parker, he invented his web shooters. I don't have the skill to invent web shooters. I don't know how a 16 year old American high school kid had the skills to invent web shooters, but he did. I don't. Um, so rope darts make sense to me. I could use them to swing from things or my spider sona could use them to swing from things and throw and catch his enemies and, and trip up villains and criminals. Uh, yeah, it works. So I went with the rope dart for my guy. <laughs> I still, however, wasn't happy with the hood. Uh, it just, I really like the spider sonas and the, the uh, uh, Miles Morales and Spider Gwen, these characters all have a hood and I really like that look, but I kind of, I, I was tempted to use it, but I really, I wanted to do something a bit different. So instead I gave my uh, spider sona my tricorn. Um, I wanted a tricorn ever since as long as I could remember. I always thought they, they are just the coolest hat, and I can never understand why they wouldn't. They're not a thing anymore. Why are tricorns are awesome? Why aren't they a thing anymore? I still don't understand. So uh, a few years ago, I happened across a shop that sell sold real leather tricorns for not a small amount of money. And uh, I treated myself to buy to, to a tricorn and uh, also an expensive coat, which I also basically modelled uh, this coat on as well. It's not exactly the same, but it has similarities. <laughs> For the final illustration, I knew I wanted to avoid the traditional red and blue suit, so I wanted to use the colours from one of my favourite uh, native species of spider, the zebra jumping spider. These guys, they're really, really small and really, really cute, and they can be found pretty much everywhere in England, especially on uh, dry walls and stuff. I used to find them all the time. So I chose to go with more of a, a grey and black and white and sort of keep a little bit of that red dark, make it darker red, uh, but keep a little bit of that red over from the traditional Spider-Man. So whilst you're just watching me uh, bring those elements together into the final design, I just want to take a minute to talk about the film Into the Spider-Verse, because oh my god, I. 
I had been desperate to watch this ever since I first saw the trailer before it came out in the cinema and I just had not had a chance until very recently. Just to give you an idea of how little time I'm talking here, I think that was on the 10th of February that I managed to get to go and see the film and I started this painting the next day. That's how long videos are taking me to make at the moment, just because of how little time I have and why I was so, so happy to find that I had a morning free to go and watch the film and oh my god, was it worth the wait. That film is probably one of the most visually stunning animated films I have ever seen. I cannot even think of a film to compare it to because there is literally nothing else quite like it. It brings together elements of computer animation and cell shading and pop art and uh, comic strips and graffiti in this incredible visual spectacular with a whole bunch of Spider-Men and just the... Oh, I love that film. I am... I, I really want to go and see it in the cinema again and I'm definitely going to be getting it as soon as it comes out on the DVD and Blu-ray and what have you because ah, oh, go watch that film, it's so good. So you can see the spider sonus, my spider sonus sorry, is uh, coming together slowly, I'm just doing a little bit more clean up on the overall figure but I'm about to start working on the background for the character and to do that I first extracted the perspective from my character into the background to ensure that they were both part of the same scene or they felt like they were part of the same scene there wasn't any weird uh, crossed uh, perspectives or anything and then from that I was able to start building up the city around him. This of course gives me the opportunity to really start trying to sell the world in which this character exists or lives. In this case obviously it's England so I want to give little hints to the fact that this is some kind of an urban English setting which uh, it can be tricky to do and uh, I hope that I managed to achieve it with this. Um, in my experience one of the things that separates English cities from most other cities is that there is a real mismatch of architecture from all sorts of different decades and very often quite brutally built on top of one another. It's mostly as a result of the Second World War and the Blitz where most of the cities were leveled and all the old buildings were just destroyed and rebuilt and redeveloped in the uh, 50s and 60s and 70s. But as a result you end up with these really modern or sort of very 60s high streets, big concrete type buildings and then really old fashioned buildings right on the other side of the street or even on the same street with these buildings built almost right on top of and around them. I think this is certainly true of most cities or certainly a lot of cities in the UK anyway. So I decided to go with uh, a very common kind of old building that you see as kind of the main focal point of the background or at least what is sort of directly in the foreground of the background if that makes sense. The midground, I suppose. Having this character and that building directly behind him really helped, kind of tied the two things into the in together just simply because the tricorn and the cloak makes the character very 18th century and the building itself is probably sort of 18th, 17th century as well. So that kind of tied together and then in the background in the far street I could have more modern looking buildings, sort of that concrete uh, 60s vibe that I was talking about. Uh, I was going to have sort of a more Victorian building a little bit further down the street but instead I opted for adding atmosphere because that's what I do. Uh, so I built up the street lamps and get, made them have sort of a fogging effect, gave the sky a lot of light pollution. I also started building up a cloud of fog or smoke or some kind of uh, smoke bomb mist thing that my character's thrown down and is emerging out of or disappearing back into or something, I don't know. 
I also uh, started adding in all the final details, like the blurring effect on the rope dart, so it gave it some kind of emotion. Also, a whole bunch of little details into the suit, like the very spiderwebby lines and things like that. And just a little detail of a real ale sign in the in the window of the uh, of the building behind him to make out like it's some kind of an old English pub of some description. And that's pretty much it. That brings us to the end of uh, this spider sona. So uh, I shall join you back in the studio. So here we are with the final result, and I am really happy with it. It feels very me. I mean, that it probably helps that he's wearing my hat and. Uh, a coat which is very much inspired by a, a jacket that I own. It, it does feel very me, not to mention of course he's using uh, skills that I have picked up along my travels over the years. Things like uh, my fire performance skills, I'm using the rope dart here. Although I've not really dabbled that much with rope dart in the past, I feel with my spidey senses and increased strength and acrobatic skills I definitely uh, probably pick it up pretty quickly. It is a shame that I lost a lot of the detail in the bottom of the picture there uh, due to forgetting which layer I was painting on, but I am nonetheless still really happy with the way that this turned out. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, with great power comes great response. No way, that's not it, is it? Take care. And I'll see you next time. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Can he swing? I'm a win. Oh God, he is Spider-Man. I don't know what that is.